Good evening, Archer families. It is lovely to be able to be with you um, this evening as our strange world um, unfortunately continues and, as we know, may well get a little bit more complex yet. But despite that, we are here together, able to work in the best interests of your child and support their education at this really crucial time. I'd like to thank you for all of the support that you have afforded me and school over the past week. <clears throat> it was, of course, a complex um, half term holiday, but I am delighted to share with you that all members of staff who um, had been affected by COVID are making a very solid recovery um, and are preparing to return to school. Um, alongside members of staff who have also been asked to self-isolate. So we're in a very strong position um, and we look forward to hopefully being able to run our full timetable um, next week after the slight modifications this week. But I'm sure you would agree that the most important thing is that everybody is safe and well and that of all of our planning um, was able to take effect um, effectively um, to secure the smooth return for our students. But of course, the focus this evening is on the um, aims and requirements for your young person at this point in um, year 11. Being in year 11 is always a complex time for those seasoned parents out there who've already done this journey with me once already. You know it's a big year. You know that young people um, will become stressed and anxious to an extent. They will feel a bit of pressure. Some of that's good. Some of it's not so good. You might even remember doing year 11 or um, fifth form yourself when you were at school. And whilst we know that many of those feelings and emotions are normal for our young person and we must embrace them and enable them to go on that journey, we also know that this year is a bit beyond normal um, and that we must put additional safeguards around them and also you as parents, because I can only imagine how it feels to be the parent of a year 11 right now. So we must acknowledge that complexity head on and we must also share the details of everything that we are doing at school to best protect your child and their education. We know that the depth assessment fortnight was completed just before half term and they took that process so seriously. The maturity, the levels of preparation were really impressive. Students are beginning to get their results back from those pieces of work and they have certainly been incredibly helpful for their teachers in preparing them for the next stage, their mock exams. Now this evening the focus is on information and structure. As I said, it would always be something we did at this point in the academic year for year 11, but it's got an added sense of structure around it because of the complexities we're currently facing. So this evening you'll have the opportunity to listen in a few moments to Mr Oakley who will talk through our planning and our contingency planning for the impending year 11 mock exams. He'll also share the timetable with you that will then be made available to you formally and then to students following their assembly tomorrow. You'll then have the opportunity to hear from each of the three heads of subject, English, Maths and Science, who will focus on providing an update in relation to the specification, key knowledge and skills that are required in relation to the subject at this point, effective preparation for the December mock, and then key assessment points that come subsequently. So a sort of timeline and journey through each of those core subjects. Then Mr Mustafa will provide some um, structure and guidance around effective revision and how to use those skills and strategies well. We are aware that our young people are not necessarily as confident in those skills at this point as they might have been had we been in school over the course of sort of April and May around their exams. So we're putting a lot of work in place at school, but we feel it will be helpful for you to have access to that information as well. And Mr Mustafa will just provide an update on sixth form applications because we know that that window is opening um, at this point. But I do feel it's important for me to share with you that we are, of course, planning as carefully as we can for our year 11 students, knowing that much unfortunately remains uncertain to us as well. What is essential now is that the time in school for your young person is prioritised, that as long as they are fit and well, they are in school and receiving their education. At this point, we intend to maintain our calendar for this half term. And should we experience any disruption to the school as a result of health and safety or coronavirus, our year 11's timetable would be prioritised first and foremost. 
alongside that calendar being prioritised for the upcoming half term, we do hope that our mock exams will take place in the first two weeks of December as scheduled. But there is a contingency plan in place for those mock exams in relation to how we may do them slightly differently, should that be appropriate for health and safety, or how we may move them to the second week of January, should that be appropriate. But as far as possible, we would like to do them as scheduled, as we feel that's important for our young people, for their preparations for the next stage, and of course, it protects the spring term. But Mr Oakley will touch on this a little bit later. At the moment, additional guidance from Ofqual has been very minimal, and the Department for Education and Central Government remain reluctant to confirm any uh, changes that might be made to GCSE exams for Year 11. Therefore, we know that we must continue um, as if they are going to be taken in full and that we best prepare our young people for those exams, but also their wider learning, subject skills, subject knowledge, because they're going to need all of that in their post-16 uh, world as well. It's not all just about preparing for these exams now, it's our wider growth as a learner. So we will do all that we can to prepare for every eventuality. There have been some confirmed changes to specifications and where that is appropriate, specifically in relation to um, English this evening, um, that we will provide an update to you. I do know that guidance by media is not feeling helpful for you as parents or for us as schools. The only confirmed change that we have aside from specifications that the, is that the exams won't start until after the May half term, apart from two papers. That's the only confirmation we have at this point. That's good confirmation. Um, historically, exams never started until the other side of May half term, and it does give us a full three further weeks in school. And I embrace that and hope it might be something that happens longer term as well. But I shall update you whenever I have key information that I feel is important for you to have or for the children to have. And should we make any changes to our plans, I would always give you as much notice as I can, particularly around those December mock exams. So what I'm going to do now is to hand over to Mr Oakley and Mr Oakley is going to talk through the steps to the mock exam process and include some of that contingency within it. Then Mr Oakley will hand over to the different core subjects and to Mr Mustafa. There will be a series of resources that are shared this evening and these will then be sent out with the Year 11 Bulletin on Friday, along with a recording of this presentation, should you find it helpful to go back to it later. If you do have any questions this evening, I would ask that you use the Q&A function. And whilst we may not address all of those questions this evening, myself and Mr Mustafa will then gather those questions to feed into the Year 11 Bulletin. Um, we found that incredibly helpful after the um, sixth form um, choices evening. So please do use the Q&A function if you have questions. I look forward to speaking to you again a little bit later. Thank you for your time this evening. And I'm going to hand back to Mr Oakley. OK, thank you, Ms. Harrison. Um, so um, as, as stated, I'm going to talk about the mock exams and the, the processes we're going to go through and explain about a bit about why we do them. So um, why do we have mock exams? Well, this is an experience of an intensive uh, period. Uh, this, the exams which are heading the students way um, in June next year um, is a tough time. You might remember it yourselves and we need to prepare them for that, prepare them in terms of stamina uh, and preparing for a, a sequence of exams uh, coming on the back of each other and making sure they can be ready for all of them and not just the first exam they come across. Um, and also just allow them to do that within a, a mock period means they can do it better the next time. So um, this allows them to learn from any mistakes they might make. Um, it's a chance for us to test our procedures to make sure that we can run them effectively in school because every year group is slightly different. Um, it is our most secure form of assessment that we can do as a so these are using uh, properly protected papers and the students won't have seen them before um, and that's the way we can get the most uh, secure assessment data that we can use going forward. Um, that then allows us to really properly analyse what the students are good and not so good at and that can really help them going forward um, as we move into January. Um, and we know that most students make about a great progress on average from their mocks to their GCSEs. Some will make much more than that and some will make less, but that's what we tend to work on um, as a principal. So this is a really important staging post for us um, in deciding the trajectory of the students and where uh, some extra support might be needed. 
And I just need to add one more point here, which is um, not to alarm you, but I think we can't hide from this, but we do need to be aware that there is a possibility that the, the GCSEs don't take place next year. And therefore, we just need to be aware that this could be our most robust form of data. And therefore, these could impact the final GCSEs awarded to the students were the GCSEs not to take place next year. So again, I don't want to be too alarmist, but it would be uh, wrong of us not to make sure that everyone is completely aware of that point. So um, the exam week um, is taking place as published on the 30th of November for two weeks until the 11th of December. Um, so we've created the timetable, which I'll show you shortly with the following key points in mind. So we want to get them uh, done and dusted before Christmas so that the spring term is a complete um, fresh start and we can go into that launched uh, into a 12 week period of, uh, of work to get them ready for their exams. Um, we want to finish before the final week of term so we get to see the students, they, we welcome them back again um, and we can start to work on uh, where we go next. But that, that last week there is really important for us because it allows us to mop up any missed exams due to illness and so on. So we've got everybody doing every single exam. Um, it is a realistic experience of what it's like to sit lots of exams in sequence whilst not setting every single exam because that's be 25 to 30 exam papers per student. We're not doing that. We're doing what we can within a two week period, which we think is the right balance. Um, we can combine exams where no clashes exist. So we know that students don't do psychology and computer science. So therefore those two exams will take place at the same time. And that's uh, again, realistic to what happens in the summer. Um, we're going to use the sports hall on the lower building. Um, I'm going to have external exam invigilators and that gives a, a realistic experience of what it's like to sit in that hall and do an exam on a desk uh, well away from any other students. So that's a really important part of the process. Um, and again, because this year you didn't have the opportunity um, in year 10, this is a really key um, experience for them to understand what it feels like. Um, any student which has access arrangements, be that uh, using a laptop for exams or a speaker or a scribe, um, or uh, anything along those lines, separate room, they will sit their exams on the upper school building. That's to keep the, um, that's where our capacity is. So any student who has at least um, one of those access arrangements will sit their exams in the upper building. Everybody else will be in the lower building um, in the sports hall. The students will be off timetable for those entire two weeks. So they're only required to come in uh, for the exams at which they're sitting. Um, the, there is very much a focus on the written exams for this exam period so that any practical subjects will do um, uh, mock practicals outside of this two week period. So this is pretty uh, uh, primarily focused on those written exams and the copy of the exam timetable, which I'm just about to show you, will be circulated to you on Friday and we're going to show that to the students in assembly uh, tomorrow. So that is what the exam timetable looks like. I'm not going to spend uh, much time on this. What you'll get a sense of here is that it's a very busy two weeks. There are three exam slots in a day and um, we've tried to work it as best as we can so that students don't have three exams in one day, but inevitably uh, because of the complexity of our, our exam blocks um, that could happen, um, but we hope that we've spread them out um, appropriately. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to dwell on this. I'm not going to go through this, but you will get a copy of this um, in the bulletin that's sent home to you on Friday. Um, so Ms. Harrison mentioned what contingency plans we have in place in case um, the national situation changes and we're given advice that says we can't uh, do what we want to do. Well, we're already going to use more room in the sports hall. We're going to space the desks out so there's more distance between uh, the students, more than is, than is required by the exams, um, by Ofqual rather. Um, we'll also put some heating in the sports hall because at this time of year it can get quite cool in there. But if the circumstances do change and we can't run the exam period for that two weeks before Christmas, then we will look at three possible uh, contingencies. One would be to complete the exams in the upper school classrooms instead of the sports hall, um, because that's where we have the space. Um, the second way would be to reduce the number of exams which we run. And then if we have to, we will move the exam block, the two week block to the spring term, um, probably the second week in January if, if that is a more a possible situation for us. So that very much depends on national guidance, but we very much hope that we can run exams when we want to, which would be from the 30th of November. So the next steps um, for year 11, well, after the exams, there'll be a results slip day um, on their first day back on January the 5th, um, which is a Tuesday. There's then uh, straight after that, there's a parent consultation evening, um, which will be virtual and that will be on the Wednesday the 6th. So straight away after Christmas, you'll get the results slip with all the exams in one go and then the parent consultation even the next day to really start to have those conversations with public teachers um, about how those exams went and what can be done uh, better. 
Um, the Archer Plus, which is our enrichment program, Archer Accelerate weekends, half term Easter um, will obviously continue and that will be a refresh um, starting in uh, January for the um, Tuesday and Thursday after school sessions. Um, but we will do our best to put in place weekend um, uh, and holiday sessions um, as long as we are allowed to do so. Um, then Learning Review Day uh, follows on the 25th of February. That's the second Learning Review Day because the first one is coming up in a couple of weeks time. Um, the, there will be a further exam period um, in March. So we usually do this just before Easter, but we're just waiting for finalization of the exam dates before we make uh, concrete decisions there. But that will be the core subjects plus the EBEC subjects um, in that as an, another exam block of time before um, the Easter holidays. So Ms. Harrison's already referenced that the GCSE dates have been pushed back to the 7th of June. So that is a good four weeks later than they would have been otherwise which is really good news for us. So there will be one English and Maths exam before that summer half term break. So those dates have been confirmed to us um, so that, but we don't know exactly when the exams will take place from that type date onwards. So the next steps for us, uh, or for you rather, is to read that timetable carefully uh, to create a personalized version and we will guide the students on how to go about doing that. But obviously the timetable has every single exam and they will only sit the exams for the subjects which they do. So they need to create their own personalised versions so they know exactly when their exams take place. Uh, revision timetables and sticking to them, this will all be uh, part of the uh, lifelong learning which Mr Mustafa is going to go through. Um, so we will guide the students on how to create these timetables, but sticking to them, making it task-based and not time-based um, is really important. So these using the revision resources provided by the departments, focusing what they don't know, don't do the easy stuff which they know focus on the stuff which they don't know is obviously going to help. The techniques Mr Muscle will go through, but it's about being active and not just reading a book. That is not helpful to anybody. Um, balancing up work, rest and play. So I think there's there's always a place for, for making sure that the, any, any uh, year 11 student has ways of relaxing um, and treats and rewards and so on, um, as long as they're doing the work as well, of course. Um, in terms of preparing for the exams, having a plastic bag, a clear plastic bag for exam equipment, um, and we will go through with the students what they need, but please if you could support us um, making sure the students are ready for their exams. Um, and then preparation as the exams come around, um, sleeping habits, breakfast, arriving in good time, these all help to de-stress the students and, and put them in the best possible place to be as successful as they can be. Talking about resilience and stamina, um, it is hard work doing all these exams back to back. Um, they do need to be resilient and not give up and just uh, recognise that whatever exam they've just sat is then done, they can't change it, they need to move on to the next one uh, and let that one go and move on to the next one as soon as they can. Um, like I've already said, we'll be sending the results home um, just before the parents evening on the 6th of January, so that's a key uh, date for you to look out for. Um, and Ms Harrison's already referenced there are some specification changes which have been confirmed. Um, once we are absolutely certain about those, we will communicate those to you because if you have tutors at home, you might want to make sure they are aware of any specification changes. But certainly um, in English, Mr. Penny will go through those changes um, in a moment. So um, just to finish off, uh, some of the things which parents can say, and as having had two children go through this myself, I, I recognise some of these, and you may um, laugh at some of these, but students were asked, what do they not like their parents saying? Um, well, once was, don't try and make it not a big deal. Um, it is important. Um, remembering how well your sister did, don't compare them to the siblings, that's never a good idea. Um, how can you work with all those screens running once? That's so tempting as a parent to say. Um, students don't like it when you say it, even though it might be true. Um, the exams aren't easier by any stretch of the imagination. Um, there are no easy subjects. Um, uh, yes, they can only do their best, but they do need to do their best. Um, brain food ideas, avocados and so on, and they don't like that. But really the last one is the best one. So this is from an A-level student. As someone sitting my A-levels next week, I prefer my parents not to talk to me at all, but for them just to keep on feeding me. And that's possibly the best advice um, that a parent can have. So there's um, plenty of information there for you to digest, but we're now going to dive into the individual subjects. And uh, so we're gonna start with Mr. Powney and he's gonna talk through English. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for um, your time this evening. So, as I'm sure you're aware, there's been lots of different changes in the media um, regarding how English is going to change. There's been lots of sensationalist headlines as well, and I'll be talking to you a little bit about. Uh, so thank you. I'll be talking to you a little bit about the upcoming ideas that we're going to be doing in English this year. 
So just to let you know so far where we are, so far this year, English, um, we've covered one English language paper, which they sat the week before half term, and all of year 11 will be receiving that feedback um, next week. So in their last next week, they'll be going through that with their class teacher, and that'll be the English language paper too. They have also completed at least one uh, Macbeth extract question in class as well. Now this has given them um, a real in insight into how Macbeth works as a play, but also the uh, skills needed to complete that exam. Now that is that was based on the exact exam questions. So so far this half term, they've had to go two exam style um, questions, one full paper and one like small paper. Leading up into the December mocks, they will do English language paper one, which is the fiction comprehension extract. Now this is taught in year 10 and it was assessed in the one year to go exams. There was also an element of this that was completed at the end of year nine. So this is the language paper that people find much more confident um, and much more um, aware of moving forward. So we're practicing this, but again, lots of resources are available um, both physically in school and available in the shared area and on Shoma homework for pupils to find the best areas um, to promote in this. Their second aspect that they'll be doing in the LUX is the English literature paper. Now I'll talk more in depth about how the English literature exam has changed this year, but this will be um, an extract in the Beth, one of which they've already had a chance to practice in, and over the next three weeks um, in the lead up to the mocks, they will have more practice of this in the coming weeks. Similarly, they will also be doing unseen poetry in the exam. Um, again, some of these skills were taught back in the um, March and January time before lockdown, but however, the skills that they're learning for analysing the extracts in Beth will also be the same skills they'll be using for the analysing of the unseen poetry. Now I know Mr Oakley mentioned as well, moving into the March mocks. Um, and again, they will be practicing the March mocks, English language paper two, which again, they have just done um, previously. So again, they get another attempt to improve and develop their response to that, uh, the English language response and English literature paper two, which is the spectacles and love and relationship comparison questions. Now again, that was one that they completed in the one year to go exam during lockdown. So again, that feedback from those assessments, which is still on showing homework and which will be able to provide them in school in their folders, is a very crucial point to moving forward. The changes that are being made to English this year focus mainly on the English literature. There is no change at all to the English language specification. So that means there's no change to the uh, non-fiction or the fiction papers. So they're continuing to follow um, in the same suits. However, changes to the English literature are focusing around what now has become compulsory. So previously, all, all pupils would have to study four separate texts, one, uh, two plays in spectacles and Macbeth, a novel, Jacqueline Hyde, and poetry. Now, for this year only, that has been changed. So this year, the only compulsory elements are now Macbeth and the unseen poetry. We will be assessing their knowledge of Macbeth and the unseen poetry in the December mock exams. So that will be our first point to analyse that um, section. However, the other paper now only contains two questions. Okay? So pupils will now be assessing their knowledge of in spectacles and the poetry um, anthology um, on the English language paper one. And so the papers are much, much shorter. You may remember before the English literature paper two was two hours and 15 minutes. Now, as we've only we've taken away one of the four texts, but that's now dramatically reduced to one hour and 40 minutes and one hour and 45 minutes. So the exams are much shorter, which hopefully will allow for better exam techniques and allow children to develop that resilience, but they may not have been able to practice as much back when we did these exams in May, um, which would normally take two hours and 15 minutes. So this year, on our way we're focusing now is that we will not be teaching Jacqueline Hyde this year in order to comply with the new changes in the AQA um, uh, exam boards and the fact that we will now only be focusing on um, the poetry, the love and relationships comparisons, Macbeth, unseen poetry and the spectacles in the essay question. Our rationale for changing this, Jackal and Hyde is the last text that we teach in our scheme of work and we've usually done between, um, between about the beginning of December but usually between January and March. So this means that if we were to teach this, we would still have time for it. However, by taking this out of our curriculum map, by taking out Jack and Hyde between January and March, we can then return to the poetry and then we can return to inspect schools, which means we can then reteach those two modules, which we haven't taught since um, December last year and January and March this year. So that means our, the much, they're much shorter texts and they were much easier revision of it. In the news, it's a bit more substantial as a lot of schools have been uh, decided to drop poetry and there's been lots of headlines around poetry. The reason why we have chosen not to do that was firstly because we have already taught this module and people have already had a good uh, sense of foundation within this, but they've also done assessment of it. 
Additionally, some of these poems are very, very short, 14, 15 lines long. This means that when they come to do their revision and um, preparation for the exam, it becomes much more manageable rather than another 100 page novel. So, a much, much shorter um, scheme of work to learn in terms of the contents and the bits to revise, and it's much more manageable to break up and um, organise in terms of their revision. So, part of our rationale for this has been A, due to uh, the modules that we haven't yet taught to our pupils, but also to enable them to have a better. Uh, experience of revising with a much more structured revision process. One thing I'd like to just mention to you is some of the feedback and kind of things that we've been coming up with in our assessments that we're passing back to students uh, next week. A lot of our pupils are very, very good at identifying feature language, but one thing we'd like to see more of is um, question uh, analysis of the terminology, to say more why, and the idea of more evaluation of the differences between these two types of fictions two types of forms. This idea of the why, why does this matter, why is this relevant? So over the last two years, we've been building up the skill of analysis, but as pupils move into the end of this course, we want them to think more, more evaluatively about the language that they're presenting. And similarly, in the idea of Macbeth, some of the ideas and features that we would like to look forward in there is again, that more evaluative aspect of the author's intent. Why has Shakespeare said this? Why does it matter this is at the time? Asking your son or daughter tonight when you get home when uh, Macbeth was uh, first performed, hopefully they should say 1606, and asking what happened the year before. Well, that's the gunpowder plot. There's a direct relevance between those two events. We've mentioned this many times in lessons, and it's one thing that we'd like to see more coming out in their responses. So that's the idea of why. Why are these options relevant? And we're moving forward there. We say what we've got coming up over the next few weeks. So in the lead up to the mock, a couple of quick wins that we would say is we do need them to learn quotation still. So Macbeth is still a text that um, they'll get an extract in the exam, they still need to learn quotations. We would say that they need to know at least five quotations per scene. Now we've already started this by going over and revising quotations, got key quotations in lessons. But an easy win for them to be doing in order to make a revision uh, resource is a quotation card or a note card for each scene with five quotations on it. I would then also suggest they have main themes on it couple of motifs and key words they can quickly look at and revise over. Similarly, uh, from this starting this week, um, there are weekly activities going to be uploaded on to Show My Homework that can, students can help complete uh, their revision activities. For example, this week, there is what's called a closed caption activity, which is uh, a long uh, page long summary of Act 1, in which essentially it's an essay, but words and keywords have been taken out, which pupils can then go back and replace themselves. This allows them to develop their understanding of the text, but also reaffirming some of their key words as they go through this. Similarly, there's also what we call translation tasks. Many people find Shakespeare's language quite difficult to get through, quite um, waiting ways. One way we've done is we found a translation sheet in which we have Shakespeare's language on one side and a modern English translation on the other side. As well, if pupils are struggling with their not able to get their head around some of Shakespeare's language, Websites such as No Fear Shakespeare directly translate it for them. So on one side of the website, they'll have the actual Shakespeare text, and on the other side, they'll have the modern translation. So No Fear Shakespeare is an excellent way of supporting them. Similarly, Seneca Learning has some great revision questions and great revision activities. Many of your children, uh, many of your children will have already been invited to classes by the uh, and online groups on Seneca Learning by the teacher. And Seneca Learning works very similarly to HT Maths and Tassimai in the way it asks questions. And although English is much more essay based, it's this good way of developing those key understandings of keywords and concepts. The idea of going back to basics with English language for what is a verb, what is a noun, an adjective, or an adverb is a really secure way of developing that strong basis going into an English language exam. So, all of these basic uh, sources are there. Similarly, on Show My Homework and um, um, resources presented to pupils recently are the school's uh, login resources with digital theatre. Now, the English and Drama Department uh, both uh, are contributed to the subscription to digital theatre, in which there are at least three or four different video recordings of Macbeth online that your son or daughter could watch as part of their vision. That will help them enable them to get more detailed understanding of these scenes, as well as having interviews from actors who play these characters to develop more in depth understanding of other countries' roles. So, before I pass over to Ms. Bowles in a minute to talk about science, the last thing I will say is reading. Always spending maybe 20 minutes per day to sit and read a book or sit and read some piece of information. We now obviously have our wonderful library after school, which is available um, to people to come and borrow books from. 
it is important that people do continue to read, as well as the many other busy things going on around us, reading will help them, and especially with English language, where they get an extract of fiction they've never seen, reading any sort of novel or any sort of fiction text is definitely going to help them develop that understanding of language. Okay, thank you very much for the time tonight. I will pass you on to Ms. Bowles for the best science. Okay, good evening. Um, so I'm Ms. Bowles and I'm here to talk to you about science. Um, the key points that I'm going to cover are how can you revise science really effectively? How can you support your child for success in GCSE science? What the assessment will look like? And the timeline in terms of where we are and what we still have left to cover. If you have any questions at all following this presentation, my email is up there on the slide. I'd be very happy to answer any of those questions. In terms of um, how do you revise science really effectively? This is something that I'm asked all the time by students. Um, so I've broken it down into three steps that I think um, can really help your child be successful at revising science. Step one is to really identify what they're not sure on. That involves them going through the textbook, looking through the subject checklists, these are provided in lessons and also on our um, Show My Homework platform and MS Teams as well. And going through the textbook, checking what subjects and what areas they think they're not so good at and they need to spend a bit more time on. They then need to revisit it. So going back through those chapters that they're not so sure on, and there are lots of resources they can use to do that. Revision guides, BBC Bite Size, YouTube has got some excellent revision lessons, revision um, videos, particularly for the required practicals. And then they need to apply. And this really needs to be the step where they spend most of their time. This is when they're applying what they know, so through exam questions, past papers are really key. The vocabulary that they need to use to answer questions successfully is very specific, so ensuring they're using that. In class, we're using 10-minute test books now on a lesson-by-lesson -lesson basis. Um, a lesson-by-lesson -lesson basis, and um, they will be seeing um, they will be seeing um, uh, lots and lots of exam questions in class. So please check um, in with your student and um, make sure that they are um, answering those questions. And online quizzes, we've got Tasmai, which is a fantastic resource for them to, to use as well. So in terms of exam technique, a lot of the questions are really challenging and literacy and exam uh, technique really do matter. The questions can be quite difficult. So sometimes it's not just about knowing more content. It's also about trying some of the harder questions, not just making lots and lots of notes, actually um, applying their knowledge to these past papers. Using mark schemes is important. And I've got some examples of the vocabulary that students need to be aware of up here um, on the slide and you can see some of the technical terms which are important so things like resolution, repeatable, does your child know what they mean, um, checking in with them and um, ensuring that they are focusing on that not just making notes from the textbook. Um, so how else can you support your child uh, in their learning? This is a set of equations that they need to know uh, from memory so I would ask them, have they started learning these equations? Um, they're all at the back of the textbook and um, that's a really easy way that you can test them because they're all there in a list um, and can they rearrange them? So can they change the subject of the equation? That's also really, really important. Um, you'll also be aware that the um, mathematical requirement of science is pretty high. So we've got here a list of all the different mathematical skills that they need to be aware of. We practice these on a regular basis in class, so they should be familiar with them. But what I would say is they really do need a calculator that they are confident using and they need to be bringing it not only to their maths lessons, but also to their science lessons. So they're practicing um, using it and actually relying on that to help them answer some of the key questions that we've got in class. Um, if they're a higher student, they'll also need a protractor and a ruler as well in science lessons. So another really important thing that you can do to check how your child is getting on is do they know the required practicals really well? 15% of the marks come from questions about required practicals. And we really do find that students struggle with these questions because they may have done the practical in class, but perhaps they didn't fully sort of understand or go through all of the steps in detail. So I would really encourage you to ask your child, do they know what, what the required practicals are? They're all listed in the front of the textbook. 
And if they're not sure on any of them, then go back to YouTube. There's lots of excellent video clips where you can see the science teacher presenting the information and um, going through the practical step by step. They have the opportunity to pause the video, make notes, um, and just really consolidating that knowledge is going to be key. Um, so in terms of the assessment structure and content, um, the content remains the same. The, there is, there's nothing that's been removed um, and the assessment structure is also um, the same as it has been in previous years. So for each science, biology, chemistry and physics, they have two papers. Um, if they're doing triple science, each of those papers will be an hour and 45 minutes, which is a considerable amount of writing time, and they will need to build up their stamina with that. So practicing those in timed conditions at home, as well as in school, will help them. If they're doing combined science, the papers are an hour and 15 minutes in length, but they still have six of them. If they, they're doing triple science, they get three separate GCSE grades, Combined scientists will have two GCSE grades, which are an average across their performance across all six papers. What are the papers like? Now in science, um, we do have tiers of entry. So a student will either be entered into the higher paper or the foundation paper. Now on the higher paper, about 60% of the questions will be high demand questions and 40% will be um, crossover with the foundation paper. On the foundation paper, the first 60% of the questions will be lower demand questions, slightly easier, and the last 40% will cross over with the first half of the higher paper. And that's to enable um, the examiners to pull apart students who would be getting a four or a five. Now it's really important that students understand what grades they can achieve on both papers. So on the foundation paper, a student can achieve anywhere between a grade five and a grade one. On the higher paper, a student can achieve anywhere between a grade nine and a grade four. If they do not meet the threshold for a grade four, they will be awarded a U. So it's really important if they're sort of borderline between a, a four and a five, we will be having careful conversations with that student to establish whether they would be best suited to the higher paper or best suited to the foundation paper. Um, and again, they, whether we enter them for either one will be determined across um, multiple end of topic tests as well as the year 11 mocks. So in the next week or so, students will be having conversations with their science teacher about what tier of entry they will be doing for their mocks. And that will most likely be what they do in the summer. There may be some changes in the, the term leading up to that, but um, most people sort of what they do at their mocks ends up being what they do in the summer as well. It's really important that they think about what implications there are for sixth form. Even if they're not planning on studying science, many A-level courses require a grade six or higher in science. So it's really important you discuss with your child whether they're likely to be doing one of those courses, check the entry requirements. And if they do need a grade six, they will need to be working towards being entered for the higher paper. Um, as parents, um, it's really important that you ensure that your child can log on to Caboodle. So it's really easy for us to reset that password. So please do let us know if they can't log on to that online resource. It's where they can get the textbook, but also lots and lots of other digital resources. Um, it's also really important that they're using Tassamai on a regular basis. OK, so Tassamai is a fantastic resource, multiple choice quizzes. They can do it as an app or they can do it on, on a website and it's really brilliant. And then something new that we're launching this week is our MS Teams revision channel where students can sign up to the team and they can access lots and lots of practice questions on there. They're clearly defined chapter by chapter. So a student can say, right, I'm struggling with chapter um, B5. I'm going to log on to the revision channel and access the class paper questions on that. It's also really to establish if they've got a CGP revision guide. These are always on sale during learning review day and they're brilliant. I'd really recommend these. Um, it's crucial that you make sure your child is revising the correct content. So if it has the words GCSE biology only above it, that's only for triple scientists. If it says higher tier, then obviously it's only if they're doing the higher tier questions. Um, now I'm going to run through these 
uh, slides very quickly. This is the timeline in terms of where we're up to. These are all available on Show My Homework. But to support students with breaking their revision down, I have prepared a week by week lead up to the mocks with exactly what chapter in the textbook they could revise. This doesn't have to be strictly adhered to, but I'd really encourage them because it, it plots it out in a very nice spread out fashion and it will mean that they cover all of the crucial content. But as I said, that's available on Show My Homework, both the combined and the triple. So I won't go through that in any more detail. What do we have left to cover after the mocks? So for combined scientists, uh, we have quite a bit of biology and chemistry left to cover. We've got paper two biology and paper two chemistry. And then we've only got a small section of physics left to cover as we've worked hard to push through that course. It's really important to note that we are pretty much on track for where we normally are at this point in the in the year. So we're not any further behind than we would normally be. And then for triple, by the mocks, we will actually have covered all of the biology course, which gives them the opportunity to really focus on their chemistry and their physics in the lead up to the March mocks. So what's upcoming in terms of assessments uh, before I hand over to Miss Williams to talk about maths? Um, obviously, the December mocks are really important. They need to have a timeline uh, spaced out for that. End of topic tests will continue to be an important part of lessons and they'll be completed in class in formal conditions. They've already done a couple of those already this term. And then obviously we're building towards the March um, core subject mocks as well. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to Ms. Williams to talk about maths. Hello, good evening. Um, I'm Mrs. Williams, head of maths. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, maths, uh, changes of the course and uh, tier decisions and then pass on to our head of Key Stage 4 Maths, Miss McDonough, who will be talking to you about how students should revise and supporting your child for success in their GCSE. Now, the key thing to know is there are no changes to the maths exam. Um, Edexcel have confirmed that. The first, the well, th there isn't really a change in the timings either. So we've only had the provisional exam timetable, but the first two exams are at the same points as usual. The third is a week later than usual. The only change that we have in maths is because there aren't a lot of other subjects scheduled before half term, only one English and one maths exam. We do have more time in school. Uh, we have more maths lessons just before that first maths exam. So that is a positive for students in terms of extra revision time. In terms of the structure of maths exams, there are three 90 minute papers. Students will either sit higher or foundation. For the first exam, they don't get a calculator. And for the second and third, they do use a calculator. All the content can appear on any of the exams. Um, and the mocks will be the same, the same, the same thing for maths. I'm gonna to talk to you briefly about tier decisions. And um, maths results suggest that we do, we are making the right tier decisions in this department. And um, we make the decisions based on the paper a student is most likely to get the best grade in, the same as in science. Um, in maths, sometimes we will trial a student on one foundation and one higher exam as late as April to see which the one they do better on. We make decisions as late as possible to give the students the very best chance. So the tier they sit at Christmas and even March may not be necessarily the tier they will sit in the summer. That's because there's an awful lot of material that's crossover between both exams and a student going from perhaps a borderline 3, 4 up to a borderline 5, 6 might be able to make that change. Um, but we can't enter a student for hire unless there is test evidence to show this is the best tier for them. Um, we can't put a student in for hire who we think might not get their 4 or a 3. So we are looking for evidence, so an exam paper to show that they've got the potential to retain a 5 or 6. And, and we will support students to produce that evidence for us through the year. Now I'm about to hand over to Ms. McDonough, my excellent second in maths. Um, he will explain uh, the revision students can can, can do at home. Um, and uh, here she is. Hello, uh, I'm Ms. McDonough, second in maths. And I just wanted to have a little talk about uh, our revision. As we can see from this graph, the more that students keep on revisiting and reviewing the information they've learned, the better that that stays in and the, the longer it becomes retained for. So in maths, we often set our revision to cover all the things that they've learned so far in order to help and embed the retention. 
Again, like science, we've done a three-step revision in which we identify. We do a lot of mini tests, we've done our diagnostics, we do exams, and these are emailed home, and you yourself as parents can see what Hegarty numbers that students need to link and learn to. Also, in lessons and the homeworks given, students also have some responsibility in what they can learn and identify themselves what they need to improve on. We would recommend that they then use Hegarty in order to improve and practice this. In maths, practice does make consistent, not perfect. And Hegarty marks as you go, which means students get that instant feedback and they can amend and adapt so that they can continue to learn what they need to improve on. Once that's secure, they can apply it. They can use Maths Genie or do exam practice, but only once they are secure in their knowledge and their skills. What we send home in order to identify, so we'll let you know which topics the students have done well on, your child has done good, which topics that they need to improve on, and these have Hegarty tasks at the side of them just so you can help and identify and encourage your child to go and revise. This here is what we expect from our classwork. Again, students self-mark throughout the lesson. They can also identify if they need to have a look and to improve on any of the areas in which they would like to revise. When they revisit, we do suggest, as like I said, Hegarty, it goes through a video, it explains how to do them, and also it's got a quiz that's marked there and then. When they're applying, they can go on Maths Genie, which they can search each topic and they have exam questions on that topic in order to practice the one skill in all the previous exam questions. At the moment, what we've been doing is we've covered all the students with a lockdown diagnostic. We've emailed this home as well. It's crucial that they're working through these. Their students are going to be rechecked on these to ensure that they are catching up with the lockdown diagnostics with help from their classroom teachers. We put out a plan of how we're going to put each of the topics that have been covered into schemes of work so that every class has got an, an individual scheme of learning which best suits the needs of each group. They're also covered in the Wednesday after school math sessions and um, these are each planned and stepped out to cover each of the topics that have been missed over lockdown. In order for us to finish the scheme of work, we finish it about March and in March we have once again another exam call. Each class then has their own individual scheme of learning created on their strengths and weaknesses as a whole of what they've done in that exam. Individual students are then given their own strengths and weaknesses and directed at which areas they personally need to work on at home or with help of the teacher but not in, in the lesson time as such. And they are directed at how best to suit their own needs and to evaluate. Ensure, please, that your child is working through the lockdown diagnostic. Ensure that they are covering the lost ground that we've done there. Strongly encourage them to attend every maths after school lesson and help them have a clear plan for next year and know what maths grades they need to get there so that they have got something that they can use and motivate themselves through this. Finally, before I pass on to Mr. Mustafa, um, I'd just like to say the equipment that we need the, your child to have are uh, as follows. A calculator, please ensure that your child has one. And a compass, again, so important that the students have one. You'd be surprised how different every compass is and how much that can throw you in a stressful situation such as an exam if you're borrowing one. So please do ensure that your child has all the equipment required in order to succeed. Thank you very much. Mr. Mustafa.
Good morning, uh, good, good evening everybody. Um, it is lovely um, to, to be with you this evening. I've got a few slides that I would like to go through with you um, following those great uh, presentations from our heads of department um, with regard to revision um, as well as some next steps in terms of um, a sixth form update and some support that is going to be in place this half term. So I'm going to be looking at importance of revision for the MOCS exams, getting ready to revise in preparation. Um, I'm also going to be looking at our lifelong learning curriculum which as you know is delivered during registration time um, and this is going to be um, kind of structured in a, a four steps to success way which is um, each step we're going to be focusing on um, in a week leading up to the mocks. Um, some ideas for revision activities um, and kind of focusing on this idea of physical proof of revision so that you are able to track what your children are doing um, at home. Um, some recommended resources that will really help in the lead up to mocks but also um, for the real things in the summer um, and as I said earlier some further support. Obviously the importance of revision is, to, is requires the students to understand something um, completely, that they're able to apply it, remember it um, and use it in an exam question and the, the number that I'm going to be using with the students tomorrow in assembly is 10%. The idea that they need to condense their work um, from classwork, homework um, and additional resources into 10% uh, chunks that they can then recall in memory and then expand whilst they are under uh, a test condition. It's really important that it's not passive, that the students are, are engaging with that um, in, a, in a range of different ways and having variety in their kind of revision diet, as it were. Um, reading through a folder, as Mr Oakley said, or a textbook is not going to help. It's only going to overwhelm them and they won't really know where to start. Um, but having a revision guide um, will um, also help. Um, but it, it does need to be something that, that they uh, are able to engage with on, on an active level. So in terms of getting started, I think it's really important that they are organised um, and they know what they need to revise and referring to the detailed exam overviews on Show My Homework, which are released by each um, subject lead um, will be the best way of doing this. Um, Organising their time, I thought Miss Bowles example um, of kind of a week by week um, and splitting up the entire uh, specification uh, that has been studied and that is going to be in those mocks and um, will be really, really helpful. Um, and, be, and planning a detailed and well structured revision timetable is going to be at the heart of that. Ticking off those subtopics and topics and modules um, as you go um, will also help for the students to kind of maintain their well-being and their motivation as they realise that um, their scores are coming up and up through mini tests and uh, uh, low stakes testing in class. I have to reinforce Miss McDonald's point as well in terms of equipment. Obviously, at this time of the year, we are noticing that a number of students are um, kind of the odd pen and the odd ruler and, and things like that are um, kind of going walkabouts. So if you haven't done over the half term holiday, I would really appreciate you kind of making sure that all students are well stocked. It is important to kind of, you know, have a little look in Smith's or, or kind of other stationary um, outlets to kind of think about, you know, different um, revision materials that they could use um, in terms of condensing their work. I find that kind of different coloured uh, cards, different coloured papers and different sizes of paper will be really helpful and invaluable, which may not be um, the usual sort of things that we buy um, for our regular stationery. In terms of kind of well-being tips, um, I think are, that are really important for our students. It is important that they have a clear space um, which they always go to to build up that routine um, to study, reducing their clutter, avoiding all distractions. So making sure that the phones are not um, kind of sat next to them, ready to um, do any revision. I know that I've spoken to a lot of parents um, over the, the previous weeks about uh, mobile phones and kind of what is appropriate. Um, but during revision time, I think it is important to kind of uh, clear those away unless they are using an app, um, such things like Tassimai or Memrise uh, to uh, revise. Making sure that they've built in their exercise and that their physical well-being is helping to promote their mental health, rewarding themselves with treats that are kind of bespoke to them, making sure that parents um, and family members are all aware of when a year 11 student is revising will help to make sure that that uh, well-being is maintained um, and obviously making sure that we're taking regular breaks and sleeping well. 
In terms of revision techniques that we're going to be looking at in lifelong learning, these are all going to be structured around our four steps to success program. This idea of understanding it will come this week um, in uh, assembly and into the beginning of next week. We're then going to start looking at condensing information, memorizing it and then reviewing it um, right before the mocks so that the students are aware of exactly what process to go through with their revision. Um, I would say that making notes on a, on a paper and kind of on paper and, and doing that in different forms, different um, ways of uh, presenting information is only going to help the students at this stage. It will also make sure that they are starting to kind of, as I say, condense their notes and their folders and their exercise books, getting rid of any pieces of information that they don't think are going to be relevant um, will uh, make things a bit more organised. Using bullet points, arrows or numbers to keep it clear um, will also help um, in in, uh, their revision process um, and I would ask that if students are doing any additional reading that they don't include anything that they don't understand it is always important to um, ask a question of a teacher if they are at a point um, where they don't understand anything. Mind maps and revision cards are just two really good ways of um, kind of presenting information in a new way. And it is also a really good way of you having clear evidence that your child has done some revision rather than doing, um, as I say, some basic reading. And this is where obviously um, some investment in some good stationery can really help. Um, there are some fantastic cue cards and revision cards that are available through CGP. Um, however, I do think it's really important that the students are having that active engagement, that they are producing their own work um, in, a, in a system that works for them, in colours that they respond to, in images that they have designed themselves. As they go on to, co to condense even further from mind maps um, and uh, revision cue cards, I think it's really important that the main, they condensed down um, to single words or even phrases, post-it notes. Obviously, Mr. Powney was talking about quotes in English earlier. These are often um, referenced in the uh, Year 11 Bulletin, which I think is a, a good place to, to kind of start using those as prompts and, and to generate those discussions at home so that you are able to support your child. Likewise, picture prompts may be a really good way of kind of um, uh, ensuring that they have that recall um, for more complex uh, processes or concepts. Um, as they then start to apply their work, um, I think it is really important as well that um, they do have that opportunity to do past exam questions for me. When I know that when I was at school and then into college and university, obviously the exam questions that had come before were always a, a really good way of um, you know, practicing where uh, we uh, have maybe got some misconceptions or, or things that we're not quite clear on. Um, so I would encourage all students to make sure that they are um, doing those past exam questions um, and you know, taking them to teachers so that they can get that feedback. Um, there is a competition which I'm going to be launching with students in terms of um, them completing past exam questions which are available in the upper school foyer um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing which students do um, come out tops in, in our competition which is going to be launched in assembly tomorrow. We will then move on to memory and looking at different ways in which we can kind of uh, help trigger um, memory for more con uh, complex concepts or processes. Pegworks and nomics are my absolute favourite. Um, I've done this a lot over the years in terms of things with that Think Henry and Quest, etc. Um, on a partial level, but they can be really useful again in terms of um, you know our, our academics and and uh, our curriculum. Um, and definitely things there to, to look into and to explore. Uh, obviously, these are only a few techniques and, and I know that I've whizzed through them in this PowerPoint, um, but and I will share these slides with you. But other things to really kind of explore, particularly for different learning styles, songs, quizzes, questions and answers, read, cover up, say, write and check, obviously is our um, a, a staple favourite from, from our own school days, role play, um, teaching somebody else and actually engaging with your child in those conversations. There may be a topic that is part of a specification that you didn't do at school, ask them to teach you it. It would be a really good way um, to kind of check in that they are doing that revision. Colour coding text and picking out different points each time, creating Venn diagrams or, or diamond nine shapes as well are really good for kinesthetic learners because they are able to actually physically move them around. 
Um, in terms of top tips for taking an exam and obviously moving into the um, the mock exam period at the end of November, these are going to be kind of on the tip of my tongue whenever I am seeing year 11. It is important that they are reading the instructions on the front of the exam paper carefully, particularly with those, those papers that have had specification changes. Checking the time that they have got for um, that, that allocated exam paper, reading through the questions, jotting down formulae and uh, points to remember on the question paper. I often in languages talk a lot about students kind of dot jotting out their tense endings so that they are able to identify those tense endings in a, uh, in a reading paper, um, which will help speed up certain questions. Start with the questions that they know um, and obviously um, most students will prefer to kind of start at question one and then moving through to question um, to the end of the exam paper. That may not necessarily be appropriate. It may well be that actually they want to start with the ending questions to get something that they know is coming out of the way and then move through and, and, and feel more confident as they progress. Check the time again. Using the number of marks for each question as a guide for timing and taking care with the quality of written communication and um, handwriting. Um, TICS is another really good acronym to kind of make sure that we're thinking carefully about questions and, and uh, our um, exams. Topic, what is the context of the question? Information, what relevant information are you, are you given in the question? And also what information are you able to supply? What is going to be relevant to actually answer that question? Command, what are you actually being asked to do? Are you being asked to state, describe or explain or are you being asked to do something which is a bit more high level like analyze or evaluate? In terms of their knowledge, what do they, what do you know that can help you answer that question? And then in terms of being satisfied, how have you satisfied satisfied the examiner? If there are five marks, have you given five points? There are, I have a number of revision uh, timetable templates which will suit different children. Um, I would really encourage all parents to encourage their children to come to see me so that I can go through those with them at a bespoke level um, on a one-to-one -one, um, basis so that they are able to get a revision timetable up and running. Um, this image that is, uh, that is being shared with you at the moment is particularly useful because it looks at topic-based um, revision timetables and gives you an indication of different time uh, frames that we should be using um, but is also just bespoke to the child and thinking about what other commitments they may well have, um, which uh, is, is really important to factor in. There is absolutely no point in saying to a child that they need to revise for three to four hours a night, which is way too unrealistic, um, if particularly if they know that they have got a tutor or a piano lesson or a sports club or, or, or something of that nature. Factoring those things in and particularly with rewards as well and family time um, is going to help support their well-being and, and making sure that they are they're being realistic about revision over the next uh, three to four weeks. Something that year 11 have been saying to me recently is that they know they need to revise, but they just don't know what to do. Um, one thing that I have kind of played around with in, in previous weeks is, and, and kind of, you know, in previous years is this idea of a revision task generator a way that we can just kind of put command word, a task, a subject, and then time frame that they need to actually do that task in um, and then color code them. And then if you follow the colors, you will end up with a different task. And that is something that you could populate with a revision timetable so that um, students know that they are getting that variety. If you then change the colors around, you get a completely different set of tasks. It's a really easy way to, to again, generate new things for them to do um, and to test out different revision um, uh, techniques. Just going to finish off with in terms of in school support over the next four weeks, we are aware that this is going to be a high pressure point for year 11. Lifelong learning is being geared towards well-being and exams over the next four weeks, as I said, with that four steps to success. There is shoot intervention for English and maths, which takes place on a Wednesday, um, and that is a really fantastic opportunity for students to kind of get involved in those extra um, classes and, and to focus on different topics that they need to um, improve in their core subjects. Tutor conferencing, which takes place on a Friday as well. Tutors have been given targeted students to speak to um, uh, the students um, so that they are able to um, kind of really focus on a one-to-one -one level and, and give them some bespoke support. 
There's my tutor sessions, which take place on a Monday and a Friday as well, as well as one to one learning and academic mentoring and one to one counselling and group counselling sessions that do take place. If you feel that your child could benefit from those one to one um, learning mentoring sessions or some counselling or group counselling, I would urge you please to get in contact with me. Likewise, the Year 11 Bulletin um, is, is the kind of the one stop place for all things Year 11 related. So I will ask you please to keep checking that. Um, access arrangements are obviously all in place um, for the MOOC so that students do have that um, additional support um, with uh, any of their access arrangements for their exams. Um, I'm available uh, and students are aware that on a Tuesday afternoon, um, myself and Mr Gillow are um, available after school to talk about sixth form support. Um, on sixth form support, just a very brief update, it is important to note um, that in November is a, a key month for different institutions to launch their open evenings, um, as well as um, their application um, deadlines, particularly for independent schools, those are earlier than state schools. Um, references for independent schools, I know Ms Harrison has already offered support um, on uh, that front. Um, but it is very important that students are starting to engage with those open evening uh, offers uh, and checking those uh, deadlines and making sure that they are securing a plan A, a plan B and a plan C. Um, and we are very much looking forward to supporting them in their one to one interviews, which are going to take place from next week um, to give them further support here at school. Um, as, as ever, if you ever need anything from me, please do not hesitate to get in touch. Um, and I really look forward to seeing all of you soon. Um, I am going to now hand back to Ms. Harrison. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Mustafa, and thank you to my colleagues. Um, I do hope parents that that level of structure and that level of detail is helpful to you at this stage. Please know that we are aware that we've shared a lot of information with you. You need time to reflect and digest on that. And that is why Mr Mustafa will send out those resources um, with the uh, bulletin on Friday. For me, I think it is some of those very subject specific um, revision plans that feel most helpful, but also some of that very diagnostic feedback from Mr Powney about common trends that had um, come through in terms of the depth assessment. So please do um, use those resources with your child and I hope that they will be helpful. A couple of questions have come through on the q and I'm so sorry if any parents have had any difficulty with sound. Um, we've been trying very hard behind the scenes to ensure that that um, um, is rectified. There's a question from a parent uh, about the sign of four. We don't teach the sign of four as a set text at school. We did with our first year group. Um, so as a parent, of course, you may well have had a child in that year group, but we haven't taught it subsequently. Um, we replaced the sign of four with Jacqueline Hyde, which is the text that we have taken out um, at this point um, in line of maximising um, the opportunities for our young people and their success in their literature exam. In terms of the tier of entry for children in terms of their um, applications, um, uh, we don't make final decisions on tiers of entry until the spring because we don't have to. But in terms of what we are thinking about tiers of entry, yes, absolutely. Um, and please do talk to your child's maths or science teacher there um, in relation to that information. Um, but we work very much on um, aiming and supporting with the best um, opportunity in terms of uh, predictions for sixth form applications. Um, and a, a further parent had asked a question about lockdown um, diagnostics. You've only had them for one child and you have three with us here at school. Thank you, sir, for, or madam, for pro providing me with so many of your lovely children. Um, we are sending those out um, with the, from the oldest children first in the school. So if you haven't had them for two of your children at this point, and you, if you haven't still had them by um, the end of this week, please may I ask you to contact those children's teachers in the first instance. If you still feel you're waiting on information, please don't hesitate to reach out to me because you should have that information by the end of this week moving into next week. I'm aware parents have found the diagnostic feedback for maths particularly helpful um, and you should see an increasing use of that structure through other subject areas in the school. So some final points from me. As I said um, at the beginning, it Year 11 is always stressful. It is always a point where um, things feel um, very significant. We wish to manage that so that our young people can be successful, confident and feel accomplished in the things they have to tackle ahead of them. 
but we recognise fully that this year is a more complex one than any that we could imagine and that we will ensure that we are planning thoroughly and carefully for every different eventuality to ensure that your young person and their education is prioritised. I would ask that you take a careful eye of all school level information to ensure that you feel as informed as possible. If we have to make any changes to our plans, we will endeavour to be as timely as possible with those changes. But unfortunately, national decision making is not always enabling me to be as timely as I would want to be. And also, unfortunately, health and safety crises are not also able to be planned for in advance. So please know that I will always endeavour to be timely, but I may need you to continue to be flexible with me there so that I can secure the best outcomes for our young people. We all want the same thing, which is their happiness, their confidence and their success. I would urge you please to ensure that your young person has engaged with the revision guidance that has been provided by their heads of department. The summary guidance was made available on the 24th of October on Show My Homework and following the subject, uh, the summary guidance, individual subject information is also being made available on Show My Homework. Those guides tend to be incredibly thorough and tend to be one of the things that our students find most helpful and most beneficial. So please do ensure that they're engaging with that. Often the simple act of printing out those resources and not having everything on the screen can feel very helpful and supportive. Um, so please think about how your child learns best and what helps them, you know them best. Um, Mr Mustafa touched on sixth form applications and he's right that this becomes a very busy month now. We're conscious that the same level of opportunities around open evenings is not necessarily available, but we continue in the bulletin each week to publish a virtual open evenings um, and we're here to support with that as much as possible. Um, and of course, um, in terms of our partnership with Woodhouse, there's plenty of opportunity for additional guidance, advice and support. I have received some references already for some independent schools and I'm looking forward to sending those off later this week. But please, if you are considering an application to independent school, that window is very tight now and I'm here and happy to help in any way that I can. But we look forward to supporting your young person with their ambitions for the future. Thank you for your time this evening. I do hope that it has been helpful. We look forward to sharing the resources with you and to supporting you and your child over the next few weeks and hoping that we are able to focus solely on their education and hope that other distractions are as minimal as possible. Thank you for your ongoing support. It means a great deal and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all very soon. Good night.